Right, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, firstly moving from your chairs and coming up in the front. And uh, let me just get started by wishing you all uh, good morning. Good morning. I'm one of your hundred people in this hall. Let's hear you better. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this book to the one who gives me the best good morning of this session. Remember, as loud as loud can be. Age no bar, designation no bar, qualification no bar. I repeat that. Age no bar. I was too early. Age no bar, designation no bar, qualification no bar. I want this to be the best that you can be. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm going and giving this book to the lady in the pink over there. Come on, put your hands together. Now, I just want to ask you a simple question. The first time when you wished me good morning, at which level did you wish me good morning? At which level? Was it level one, two, three, four, five? Did the level change when you wished me good morning the second time? And did the level change when you wished me good morning the third time? I want to ask you all a question. Do you think you were at your level 10 the first or the second time? Yes or no? Quick. No. No, but third time were you better? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, so my question to you is this. Why did it take you three times before you could give me the best? Why three times? Why not the first time? Well, because you chose not to give me your best the first time. You made a choice to give me the best the third time. Why? Because there was a trigger and the trigger was the book. There was a trigger and the trigger was the competition. There was a trigger and I really went ahead and pumped all of you up and you decided that you want to give me the very best. And this is what the session is all about, ladies and gentlemen, how we can play our game at level 10. Before I get started, I want you all to put your hands together for the lady who won the book at level 10. When it was about wishing good morning, it took me three times. This time, for clapping for the girl, knowing that she had already won, we still did not clap at level 10. This is really what happens to all of us as human beings. We are always waiting for some trigger before we give the best of ourselves. So the trigger this time was not a book. The trigger was my motivating you to give that to her. So the big question that I want to ask everybody over here is, at which level do you play your game of life? Whether it's your business, whether it's your personal life, whether it's your spiritual life, the question is, at which level are you playing your game? That's the question we're addressing. And can we push the level up by doing a few things right? Ladies and gentlemen, as human beings, we are always designed to give less but expect more. We're designed to give less but expect more. But it never really happens in life because what you give is what you get, and what you get is what you deserve. As youngsters in school and colleges, we told ourselves, I want to get a 60%. You must have landed up with 55 or 65, not more than that. Why? Because that's the choice you make. Nobody stopped you from asking yourself that I can do 80 or 90 or 100. You stopped yourself, nobody else did. Check it out. Your teacher never stopped you. Your parents never stopped you. You stopped yourself and told yourself, I can't do any better. And really, you were in that range. The question is, what you give is what you get. What you get is what you deserve. The question is, can I change that? Yes, you can. And my, my philosophy that I'm sharing with you today is this, that you don't need to do something incredibly different to achieve that result. All you need to do is to do what you've always done in circumstances which I'll prove to you today have really been the instrumental piece for you to become so powerful and for you to become successful. You just need to practice that thereafter. The session is not about my life as much as it is about the experiences of my life which I'm putting together in these 10 slides for all of you. Before I start at level 10, I want to ask you all, are you ready? Yes, no? Yes! Now look at the energy levels, from 3 to 2, from 2 to 1, and there we are, we just got it right, session's over, thank you very much. <laughs> but really it is not, yeah, and, and you want to clap, you can clap, you want to laugh, you can laugh, you want to cry, you can cry. The important thing is this, you've got to really go ahead and play your game at level 10, because not doing that, you're wasting your time with whatever activity that you're involved in. The question I'm really asking everybody over here to ask is, at which level are you playing your game? As human beings, we are designed not to play the game at level 10 until unless there is a... You got it. So let's have a look at this. Let me ask you, have you heard of Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi? Yes or no? Yes. Have you heard of uh, Mahatma Gandhi? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Somebody says same person. What in the next few minutes I can prove to you that Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi and Mahatma Gandhi are not the same people. They are two different individuals. Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi was born to a rich father. His father says, son, you've grown up now, and therefore I want you to go to England, become a barrister, and come back. That's what he did. 
He came back to India as a barrister, but how many of you know this? He did not succeed as a barrister. Why? Because he was scared. He was scared to talk in front of people. He was scared of being the center of attention. He never did succeed, Mohandas Karantan Gandhi, as a barrister in India. So his father said, go to South Africa. He did that. He went to South Africa, was just a common guy. People laughed at him for his various experimentations with his hairstyle and his clothes as well. Until one day when he was traveling on a train in the first class compartment and Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was thrown out of the train saying that you don't deserve to be in a compartment like this. When he was thrown out of the train, he did not take stones and pelt them on the train. Neither did he shout out abuses. He was sitting on a chair, shocked completely saying, how can a human being be treated so badly? Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, an ordinary man. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, a failure barrister. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, struggling in his life, was thrown out of the train. And when he was thrown out of the train, shell shocked that he was, he just told himself that you threw me out of your train. Someday I will throw you out of my country. And that was the transformation of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi's life to transform into becoming Mahatma Gandhi. So people asked him, how will you do it? How will you get India independence? So he said, I'm going to do it through Ahimsa and Truth. And people laughed at him and said, really? Is that possible? Give us one instance. Give us one example of any country who's managed to do that. Gain independence just through Ahimsa, non-violence. And yes, there were no precedents, there were no examples. So people laughed at him. They ignored him. They fought with him. He won. How is the question? How is the question? When everybody was saying, give me your blood and I will give you independence. Come and join with us and learn how to use weapons and I will give you independence. There was this man who came from nowhere saying, walk with me and I'll give you independence. Just walk with me. People said, there's no harm in walking. There's no risk as well. Let's walk with him. So people started walking with him until there was a Jalimbala Bhak. They walked with him until there was a killing of Bhagat Singh. They kept walking with him and there were all things going wrong. But at some point in time, the trigger that, Mahat, that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi got to go and get India independence through Ahimsa and non-violence was tested once, was tested twice, was tested more than a hundred times, was tested more than a thousand times for over three decades. But Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi said, I will stick to what I said I will do. And that's my commitment to myself, and my country and the people of this world. It took him 20 years first in South Africa, 30 years thereafter in India. But ladies and gentlemen, that man got us. The man got us independence. And who was known as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi transformed himself with one thing called commitment to become Mahatma Gandhi. You want to put your hands together for him. right now over here ladies and gentlemen that there is a Mahatma in each one of you there's Mahatma here and there's Mahatma there and there's Mahatma here remember this session of mine is not just about you listening but you've got to really play this game at level 10 first you did so in clapping and wishing me next you did so in cheering now is the time for you to participate with me because if not that this session is not going to come alive I said there is a Mahatma in you and I'm going to prove to you in the next 60 seconds you ready for it yes no yes, yes you are I want each one of you, either close your eyes, open your eyes, it doesn't really matter. And in 60 seconds time, what I want you to do is to think of the most difficult circumstance of your life. Results come best when you close your eyes. Think about the time where you really found life to be very tough. Maybe you lost someone you love. Maybe you failed in something. Maybe your upbringing was under very trying circumstances. Maybe life was not easy at all and you really had to struggle for every meal that you ate. I do not know. But think of the most difficult circumstance of your life. What happened thereafter? Open your eyes. I'm sure there are people who must have thought of different things. Raise your hands if you think my guess is right. How many of you have thought of people who you really love but you lost them and that you felt was a tough moment of your life? Raise your hands up please, quick. A lot of you, hands down. How many of you guys have situations where somebody's insulted you, put you down, somebody said you're not worth it? Raise your hands up, please. Hands down. How many of you guys have situations where you have actually tried to do something, you set a target but you didn't receive that and you felt that was basically a personal failure? Raise your hands up, please. Thank you very much. You see that our hands going up for everything. But the big question I want to ask everybody over here is this. What happened after that? You lost someone you really love. Maybe your dad or your mom, maybe someone your uncle. I don't know. And you knew that life's going to be tough. 
but you bounced back pretty did you bounce back with power you bounce back and you say i can do it and because you bounce back you're here seated as a successful person you must have come in your life with the right trying circumstances back at home financially but you proved and your parents proved that you can do it and which is why you're able to afford this education and ladies and gentlemen if you did that if you did that it means to say that you worked on a trigger it worked on a trigger you committed yourself that you will not be lying down lay low you are a bounce back you bounced back and which is why you're sitting over here as a successful person and if that's truth then there's a the mahatma in you and if that's truth put your hands together for each other in the hall In just about uh, in just about what in, in about 12 minutes, there is a Mahatma in you. I'm going to go really fast on this one. What happens is this: that people don't really succeed and become Mahatma Gandhi. But you ask me a question, Rahul. If I have a Mahatma in me, why am I not as powerful as Mahatma Gandhi, as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi? But I want to know this: there are examples of so many people who've done that. So many people. Have a look at this. There you go. You have scientists, you have film stars, you have businessmen, and you have sports people who've all done it. You say, Rahul, Indian examples. There are people who've done it. But you know what? What I want you to know is this: the difference between the guys who are here and because they're here on the screen versus the rest of us is because there's something different that they're doing. And what they're doing different is that they don't fall in the trap of the trigger that comes in, makes you work hard. You achieve sense of satisfaction, then say, "I am fine." And most human beings remain calm thereafter. Some become extraordinary because they keep the trigger on till they die, under every circumstance of their life. And I call that continuous commitment, which keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. It doesn't really stop at all. And you say, "Rahul, this is theory." No, it is not. You heard my introduction to this board. I am Bangalore, I am PL, Times of India, best outstanding young person of India and what not. How many of you know this? I lost my dad when I was young. How many of you know this? Somebody said we feel like growing rotten eggs and tomatoes in you. How many of you know this? Somebody said my English sucks and you know what. How many of you know this? Somebody said you're too young to trade. But today I stand over here having got my first book published by Times of India. Somebody said we feel like growing rotten eggs and tomatoes in you. I hosted the biggest show on planet Earth, the IPL3 final. And I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, for those who said you're too young to train, I was the youngest faculty at IM Bangalore. I am not talking things out of books. I'm saying that life really works if you really want to be. The main thing is this, that there is a continuous trigger, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. The more triggers you have, the higher you go. But most people get blocked down and say, oh, no, one more trigger, give me a break, and they become average. So ladies and gentlemen, my message to all of you is, keep looking for triggers when somebody insults you great job when somebody puts you down great job when life gives you the biggest challenge great job because all of that is building a potential for you to be the best and that's the philosophy i'm sharing with all of you remember ladies and gentlemen i've also shared with you that there you have a mahatma in you but i want to know most people find it difficult to be continuously committed but i can prove to you right now in this hall that you have the ability are you ready yes or no yes answer my question and answer really fast how are you married raise your hands up please my sympathies with you, hands down. <laughs> How many of you not married? Raise your hands up, please. Hands down. A lot of you are not married. I'm going to ask you one question. Common question to all. I want an instant answer. Very quick instant answer. Very quick, don't think. Will you let your child die of hunger? No. No, you will not. Tell me why. Very quickly, tell me why. No. Even, no. even those who are married said, no, don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Why will you not let your child die of hunger fast? Because you love your child. Because you love your child. Because you love your child. Next. Because, because he's, my child. Child. he's your child. What else? It's not a humane thing to do. Yeah. Go what else? Come on. Give me the answers. It's your responsibility. It's your child, and you will not let him die of hunger. Ladies and gentlemen, exactly that. Bring the philosophy in and ask yourself: When you are ready to do continuous commitment for a child who's not born, and you know that whatever happens, I will not let my child die of hunger. It proves that all of us have the ability to be continuously committed. The message to all of you is this: Don't doubt yourself in this circumstance. Go up there, take the philosophy, put it back into your education, put it back into your job, put it back into everything you do, and you will be the Mahatma that I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. If you think I'm making sense, please put your hands together for me. Please. You know what? There are broken commitments as well. People break commitments without realizing. People like the stall words I spoke about. They make a commitment, they stick with it, and they work hard. There are some who break a commitment, they give up, they say, I can't do it. 
And I'm going to bring to you now a philosophy saying that you have a Mahatma, you need to work continuously to keep the Mahatma going. And the last part, ladies and gentlemen, is this. When there's a broken commitment, remember, the problem is with integrity. Because every broken commitment breaks a relationship. Integrity means honor your words. Say what you mean, mean what you say, and do what you said you will do. If you say, I will pick you up at 7 o'clock, you don't pick the person at 7 o'clock. Broken commitment, broken relationship. When you say, I want to achieve a target, you don't achieve a target, what does it mean? That the organization suffers, it means there is a broken relationship and there is a broken commitment as well. So how do you fix that? Remember, it's very important, the moment you find a broken commitment or a broken relationship, you will encounter three problems. And the problems you will encounter are right here. Productivity will suffer, results will not come, and people will make excuses. Now you don't want excuses, you know why? Because when I'm over here saying I did not get the results, I'm out of integrity, right? I said I will go for a job. I did not go. I'll buy new shoes so I can start going to the gym. You bought the shoes, you do not go. I'm gonna wake up in the morning, you drink. You're out of integrity. Now what happens when you're out of integrity? One part of your mind gets occupied in telling yourself something is wrong. When you tell yourself something is wrong, you do two things. You blame external circumstances of people and say, I'm not doing it because this, 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 and you break a relationship with someone outside. Or you kill yourself by saying, I'm not worth it, I, don't, I can't do it, I don't have the skill, I don't have knowledge, and you actually kill a relationship over here, either with yourself or with someone else. What's the message? When you have a broken commitment, there's a broken relationship, there's a loss of productivity result, people make excuses. For us to achieve great results, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do is this. My last gift for you. Just realign. Tell the person or tell yourself, I made a commitment, I broke it. I accept and acknowledge it. The moment you do that, you join the relationship back. Bring in the commitment. Add continuous commitment to that. And then start all over again. And ladies and gentlemen, what you will get is results. To wrap things up, I just have to tell you all, let's play every game of our life like we are champions. Because we are born as human beings with all the senses that we have. And it is a moral responsibility to achieve success. Because no one is born big or small. We are all born with equal, just about equal skills, knowledges. And what we need to do is start using it, applying it. My final parting message to all of you is just this. Always commit and bring in continuous commitment. Don't complain. Go ahead and get results, not excuses. Because life is worth living. Life is worth living for ourselves and our loved ones. And if you ask me in one last question, Rahul, can you give me examples of people who have played the game at level 10? Apart from the ones over there, people who play the game at level 10, your father, your mother, your brother, your gurus, your teachers, all of them just for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my wrap up. And that is, please go ahead and play your game at level 10.